2 o'clock, so let's get started. So, um, just an announcement, quiz 8 out tomorrow, Saturday, like usual. Homework 4 is out, and you have an extra week to do part 1, so yay. Okay, so are there any questions before we start? About midterm, homework 3, class in general, anything you're confused about with the material? Forty-two people and no questions. Either you're all on top of it or none of you are. <laughs> so, so questions going once, going twice. All right. So, what did we talk about in the one lecture we had last week? So this week is really difficult because it's so little material to go off of, but it's still interesting that we can build the whole time anyway. What, but what did we cover last week? Oh, yeah, P, this PDA to CFG thing, right? So if we could show this, then what can I claim in general? Right, the languages accepted by PDAs and CFGs are the same. Well, how do we know that? Well, the, the previous week's recitations did this direction. So if we can show that direction, then we can convert back and forth, just like with NFAs and DFAs. So how in the world am I gonna do this? I am given an arbitrary PDA, and I wanna make a CFG for it. I wanna make a grammar for it. So how in the world am I gonna do that? Well, let's see. Let's look at an arbitrary PDA. Say this one. It doesn't look like a box, but. And let's say, for example, it has two final steps. When we did the NFA to regular expression conversion, what was the very first thing that we did? <coughs> Well, I don't need to necessarily, well, I could make a new start state, but, and here I'm not really worried about ripping states out, so I don't need to make a new start state. But what did we do about the final state? No, we're not doing cleaning start. We, we made a new one, right? And why did we want to do that? Uh, yeah, so here what we want to do is, we want to ensure there's only one way into the machine and one way to accept. One, well, not one way, but one state I could accept it. Whereas before, I had two ways to accept, and now I want this guy to be the only final state. Yeah. So is it going to be like the GNFA? Uh, we're not going to be ripping states out. I just wanted to mention the relation because we want to uh, enforce that we accept in this state. So in that way it's similar, but every, every other way it's not. Okay, well if this guy's the final st only final state, I better make these guys non-final. So I'm gonna make these, put these two non-final. But how am I gonna link up this new accept state to the old machine? Epsilon transition. Well, should I read on them? No, because if I get here, I shouldn't have to read anything else to accept because I was going to accept anything. So I shouldn't read on them. Should I pop anything? Well, I don't know offhand because this is an arbitrary PDA. I don't know its structure. I don't know that I push a character on at the beginning. Maybe the very, all the transitions coming out of the start state pop and the machine is useless at that point. I don't know. This is an arbitrary PDA. So I can't, as, can I assume anything about the stack type here? No. no. What do I know about the uh, stack type when it starts up? It must be empty. But do I have to assume that about when it accepts? No. No. So it may or may not be empty. So I don't have any choice to, but to not pop here because it could be empty. So I'm not going to pop either. And 
for almost the same reason, I'm not going to push anything because I don't want to complicate what's on the stack. Okay, well, why do you think I'm going to add this extra state? Other than the fact that there's one way in, one way out. Well, what I want to do is, if we look at the stack height for something that's accepted, it starts off empty, and it might not end empty because we don't require it to be. Wouldn't it be nice if we could enforce that there is a way to end up empty? Yeah. So, for example, if we look at the stack height over time, then it starts off empty, then I kind of want to make this uh, symmetric in a sense. So I want it to end up back at zero. So what do I want to do in this state then? A self loop, just what am I doing on those transitions? And I'm taking the stack, just popping everything off. So I'm going to have a self loop where I don't read, pop the uh, any character, and push nothing for all uh, stack characters. For every stack character, I'm going to have this self loop at the end that just pops everything off that was on the stack. And if it, and, and then you say, well, what if I come over here? I may do this a number of times, and the stack is now empty. I can't apply a transition now. So what do I do? I, I would have to accept, or, given the fact that I've read the input, because I don't have any other transition to do. Even if I didn't apply these transitions, I still could accept because I don't have to take this transition, if I don't want to. I could, but I don't have to. Okay. And the important thing is, on these three trans well, these three models of transitions, do I ever read? No. So the only way I could have gotten to here and, and have had accepted is if I could have accepted before, having read up the entire Okay? Well, that's good. But what do I want to model with the stack height over time? I want to look at what happens to the stack. So let's see. If we see a push somewhere, say here, and let's say that it does some stuff in the middle, and then sometime later it pops right there. What do I know about those two symbols? The same. They're the same. Oh, but they might not be, actually, because what if I did instead this? So let's say I push something on. Then I apply a transition where I pop and push on the same transition. This may be a completely different symbol than this one that's on the stack. So if I pop here, let's say, I can't guarantee anything about these two characters being the same. So what should I do instead to fix that problem? Only pop or push. Right. If I only pop or push, what do I know about the stack height? It all it either goes up by one or it goes down by one. It never stays the same. So I don't have this problem. If I did that, I don't have this problem anymore where I don't know what's on the stack. Then I can see what happens in the middle and I know that these two characters correspond. Any questions about this so far? Okay. Well, what are the possible transitions? Either we both push and pop, we do exactly what of push and pop, or we don't do either. Those are the only possibilities. What, for the ones that do exactly one of push or pop, do I need to worry about those? No. No, because they do this up or down thing that I'm interested in anyway. So the only things I need to worry about are when you do neither push or pop or both. So let's see. Let's suppose we had a transition like this. And let's say it reads an A, it may not read at all, but it doesn't push or pop. Can I somehow model this transition as one or more transitions where I push, uh, I do only push or only pop? Yeah, how would I do that? Push something random and then pop it on. Yeah, push, I push some character on. What character do I pop off? Same character. The same character, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this into two transitions. 
And so here we see that we see that uh, I read a character A. Well, should I read on both of these? No. No, because then I would read two characters and I have only read one or zero of this effect. So I'm just going to put it on the first transition. It doesn't matter which one, actually. So what should this transition do? Should it pop? No. Push. No, it should push. Let's say it pushes an X, some arbitrary character. Here, I, as we just said, we shouldn't read. What character should I pop? X. X. X, good. And should I push anything? No. 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 Cool. So the whole, actually this entire class, in a sense, uh, is built around simulation. I'm simulating this transition with these two transitions with the property that I want that they do exactly what I push upon. So what about the other one, where I do pop and push? How am I going to model that as transitions? So this pop might happen. Right. Which operation am I doing first, pop or push? Pop. Right. Uh, if I do a push, then if I pop, then I'm hopeless at getting the B because it's not on the top of it. So I, I'll do the, almost the exact same thing, same idea, but I'm going to pop on the first transition. Well, what am I popping? I'm popping the B. So I pop B. Should I push on this one? No. No, no because then uh, I'm not going to get the C that I want here. Uh, actually, I shouldn't push either because I want to do exactly one of them anyway. And then for this one, I better not read, uh, better not pop, and I'm going to push. Cool. Is there something that's really nice about this? Does this work, this conversion that I just did, does it work for any PDA? Yeah. So, and I, I better hope it works for any PDA if I want to show this. So we're on a good road so far. OK. So now we've ensured that the stack height is only going to go up by one or down by one every single time. and. By doing this, we ensure that there is a way to end up at zero at the end. So what does the very first transition do? It has to push. Can it pop? No, because I said that the string is accepted by the machine. And if it pops, then we're stuck. So the very first transition pushes. What does the last transition do? Uh, pops for the same reason, I can't push to height zero. And in the middle, it can go up or down, up and down. Can it come back down to zero? Yes. Yeah, uh, there's nothing saying that it can't have an empty stack then push something back on it. And it may do some crazy thing in the middle, but I'm just seeing what happens in general. Let's look at this pop right here. Do you know anything about that pop? Yeah, what do you know? Ah, I push some character here. It never hits zero. What's the only way I can check if something is on the stack? Pop it. So there's no way I can know, let's say this character is X. I don't know whether X is on the stack unless I pop it. So by doing this, I ensure that I match these up correctly. What about one height above? Say that push and this pop. Do you know anything about those? They're the same also. So what we realize is that going from an empty stack to empty stack, if I look at a transition where I push some symbol and pop, and another one which pops the same symbol, then I need to match them up. So now we're ready to make grammar, pretty much. So what variables should I make for this grammar, or did we make for this grammar? Well, I know that I only have one way in, one way out. Well, let's see. I want to know all the strings that take me from here, starting with an empty stack, and coming here to an empty stack. If I know how to get from here to here, do I know how to get from here to here? Yes, because let's, let's say that this transition read it doesn't then I can just stick whatever character I read onto every string that took me from here to here. What about like some weird 
uh, transition from some state in here to some other state in here. Do you think I need to know that subproblem too? I might. I might not necessarily in general, but I still might. So one thing we can do is model all possible uh, pairs of states and what strings take you from one of those states to the other state. But what do we have to guarantee about the stack from that state to the other state? It better be empty to empty. Because if it wasn't, then I can't match this push with this pop. It has to end up the same. So what variables are we going to make? Well, I got to represent all possible two choices of states. So what I'm going to do is, the convention is used to use capital A, but then I need to put two states corresponding to each other. So I'm, I'm, the usual way of doing this is A sub P, Q, where P and Q are states. So what does this really mean? This says, this variable that I'm going to make uh, represents all the, well, it generates all the strings that take me from state P to state Q in the P to A from empty stack to empty stack. So, what is the start variable then? Well, do I know the start state? Yeah, Q0, let's call it. So it takes me from Q0 to where? The single final state, right? Because I want all the strings that take me, that are accepted by the PDA. Well, the only strings that are accepted by the PDA are the ones that take me from here to the final state. So that's why we made a single final state, because I want to have a single variable make all of them. So that's what we're going to do, uh, where QF is the single final state. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And uh, we get another thing for free. The input alphabet of the PDA is the set of terminals in the grammar because we have to have the same language. So all we need to worry about now are the rules. So now I got to link up somehow all of these uh, variables together in terms of the states of the original PDA. Well, let's start off with an easy one. Let's suppose that I'm in a state and I want to figure out what strings take me back to myself. There may be a lot of strings that uh, get me from uh, myself back to myself with the same stack type, but what's one that we know for sure? What was it? A loop. Well, I don't know if there's a loop here, but what string takes me from myself to myself? Epsilon. Epsilon, right? And it doesn't change the stack type. So I know that going from myself to myself, I can just eliminate that variable because I'm already right where I need to be. Well, let's see. Am I allowed to come back to zero before the final state at the end? Yeah. So maybe we can relate what we did here in the first part with what we did in the second part. So let's call the state I'm in here P. This one I'm going to call Q. This one I'm going to call R. And P, Q, R may be completely different states, maybe the same state. I don't know. But I'm going to model all possibilities. Again, some of these variables may make absolutely no sense, may never generate anything, but I'm modeling all possibilities just in case. Well, let's see. I want to know, how do I get from here to here? This may be the start final state, maybe completely different states. But let's say I wanted to know how to get from P to R. Can I use Q to help me? Yeah, yeah. yeah how can I use it to help me? If I know how to get from here to here, and I know how to get from here to here, do I know how to get from P to R? Yeah, how do I do it? Well, yeah, so I look at any string that this thing could make, this whatever this variable is, P 
concatenated with whatever string this guy can make. Okay, let's see. So if we go from P to Q, if I know how to do that, then I know how to get from Q to R, well then I just got from P to R. So I know how to do this. So all of all this really is is just a bunch of sub problems and we just combine them. It's, it's, it's literally just recursion at this point. Well, I better not stick with these two rules, these two types of rules. And why is that? I, I won't generate anything other than an empty string, possibly. So we got to generate other things. Well, let's see. I mentioned this push matches this pop. So let's uh, magnify it, I guess. So I'm going to assume, uh, because we're going to model it via all possibilities again, that this is the first time I come back down. I don't come down to where I started from in the middle at all. Well, these could be arbitrary states, so I'm going to call them P, uh, R, S, Q. So my goal is to get from P to Q. Well, let's say that this transition, this push in one, pushes uh, an X on. Does it pop at all? this first transition? No, so I'm not going to uh, pop, but I'm going to push, say, an X, let's say. What does this uh, last transition have to do? Pop X. Pop X. So I get X, this is empty. Well, do I have any uh, restriction as to what I read on those two transitions? No, uh, could they be empty? Possibly, yeah. So let's, in general, say that this reads an A, and this one reads B. Uh, a and B themselves could be empty. I'm just allowing the possibility that they're not. Well, let's see. If I know how to get from R to S, do I know how to get from P to Q? Yeah, how do I do it? Right. So my goal, remember, is getting from P to Q. And I'm assuming I know how to get from R to S. Well, that's just the variable ARS. Well, how do I get something in APQ? It's read an A, anything concatenated with, anything that ARS could make, followed by reading a B. So where did the A and B fit on that right-hand side? Before and after. Uh, before and after. So the A's before and the B's after. Uh, and again, these four states, P, Q, R, S, they may be completely the same, they may be completely different. A and B themselves could be empty. Actually, uh, X could be empty as well. Uh, actually, no, it can't. I corrected myself. Yeah, X cannot be empty because if it did, then I would have had that transition removed earlier or anything. So X can't be empty, but A and B can be empty. So that's actually the last type of rule. Okay. It's just all it is is just sub problems and combine them together. Any questions about this? Okay, so let's get on to uh, converting a PDA to a CFG. So you'll pretty soon see that you don't want to write this out by hand. So uh, I highly recommend that you get a computer to do this because it gets quite insane sometimes. And even in this small example, it gets pretty big. So I'm not going to write every single rule. So what is the first step if I want to convert this PDA to a CFG? What do I have to do first? Uh, I got to make a new final state. But you say that, well, there only is one final state, so we're already fine. And I have this self loop here. Do I need to add a new final state? Yes. 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 And why is that? It still reads a character. On these transitions, do I read? No. So I can't make Q2 a final, the single final state that I need here. I need to add another state. 
So I'm going to make Q2 non-final. I'm going to add a new state Q3. How am I going to get from 2 to 3? Uh, a triple epsilon transition, just like we did in our construction. So triple epsilon. Q3 obviously is going to be final. And then what is Q3 going to do? Self-loop self popping all characters off. Well, it's not explicitly said what the stack characters are, but I'm going to assume that it's going to be only A and B. So because I push uh, B and pop B, and I push A and pop A. So I, I'm going to make it simple for myself. So not going to read, pop an A, push nothing, pop a B, push nothing. Okay. Cool. So we added this new final state. What else do we have to do? Yeah, transitions can only push and pop. Are we already there? We're, we're almost there. This one's good, this one's good, this one's good, this one's good. Oh, this one's not good, and these two are good. Right? Just because we had to do, add a new final state, I introduced this problem. So how am I going to fix that? I'm going to add, uh, add a new state with two transitions and delete the old guy. So just remember that this transition does not work. That's all we need to know. And doesn't push a problem. So I'm going to add a new state Q4 with two transitions. Since the original uh, transition did not read, both of these obviously are not going to read. Epsilon of both. And just like we did before, uh, now that it's raised, uh, Conveniently enough. Uh, what did we do first? We push some symbol so I can pick from A or B. Then on the next transition, do I pop the same or a different symbol? Same. same. So I'm going to push on, let's say, an A. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to pop the same curve on the next transition. And now we actually do have a PDA in the form that we want. Always single start state, but a single final state, a way to accept with the stack empty, and every transition does one of push or pop. Cool. Any questions on that conversion so far? Yeah. Uh, Q2 is fine because I, I pop a single A, push nothing. Sorry for my atrocious handwriting. If I write atrociously, please tell me. Because I'm, I'm known to write atrociously. We're computer scientists after all. Yeah. Can you push and pop something that's not a stack character? Just some arbitrary. Well, you're pushing and popping onto the stack, so it has to be in the stack now. Yeah. So, uh, oh, yeah, a good point, actually. Um, it's actually true here that the stack alphabet is the same as the input alphabet. Do they have to be the same? No, we just guarantee that they're both alphabets. We don't have any relation to each other. They just happen to be the same. Cool. So now what do we have to do? What is our goal? Uh, yeah, well, the rules, but even before that. Uh, create variables. So, so I'm going to make variables. I have five states here. How many rules? Uh, sorry, how many variables am I going to make? Are there any relation between P and Q here? Uh, other than the fact that they're states? No, there's no relation. So how many variables am I going to make? Five. I've heard five and twenty-two and thirty. Five choices for P. Five choices independently for Q. How many is that? 25. So, obviously, I'm not going to write them all down, but I'm going to write a few down. So, I got to, even if they make no sense, I'm going to write them down. So, Q0, Q0, A sub Q0, Q1, 
and then all the way up to A through 4. And then, well, let's think about this for a second. Do I need all these variables? In general, I will. But in this particular case, do I need them all? Well, what, does it what do the variables represent? It represents going from Q0 to Q0, empty stack to empty stack. Are there ones that absolutely make no sense? Yeah, like what? Q4 to, say, Q1. Will that variable ever make anything? No, because I have no way to get back. So if you have, if, if you think of it as a directed graph, if you have strong, if it's, if the graph is strongly connected, then you will have uh, every variable used somewhere. It'll be uh, productive in that sense. But here it's not strongly connected, so therefore every variable is not going to be used. But I want this to work for every PDA, so I'm going to include every single variable. Okay. Even if some variables make absolutely nothing. So the terminals are obviously going to be A and B. So A and B here represent the input alphabet here, not the stack alphabet, even though it's the same thing. OK, so now we've got to make rules. Which ones are the simplest set of rules to do? Which ones are the easiest? Yeah, yeah the, the, the ones that you stay in the same state and produce epsilon. Well, how many rules does that make? Well, five here. So, a q0, q0 makes empty. I'm not going to write them all, but I'll write a few. So, q1, q1 makes empty. And I go all the way to q4, q4 makes empty. Okay. That's good. So now we're done with the first set of rules. Now I've got to do the second set of rules. Do P, Q, and R here in the second set, do they have anything to do with each other? Do they have any relation to each other? Uh, oh, I'm assuming that I go from empty stack to empty stack on these. Do they have any relation to each other? I don't think so, because uh, I could conceivably go from any state to any other state using any other state in the middle, right? I could use the same state all three of those times. So there's no relation between P, Q, and R here. So how many rules do you think this makes then? Five choices independently for P, five choices for Q, five choices for R. How many is that? 25. So again, I'm not going to write every single one. But I will write a few. So Q0, Q0. Well, let's just say I have Q0 twice here. I'm going to have two A's over here. What do you know about the subscripts already on those other two A's? Well, let's see. If P and R are both Q0, well, that means the first one of the first A and the second one of the second A are both Q0. So I can say confidently that we have this for sure. Is there any relation between Q and P and R? Other than the fact that they're states. No. So could I conceivably choose anything to go here? Yeah, I can pick anything. So let's say choose Q2. Now I gotta do this for every single state in the middle. Then I gotta try the next pair with every single state, next pair, every single state. So let's do one more. Let's say I have Q1, uh, yeah, Q1, Q3. Well, we know immediately that from this one, the first coordinate goes with the first one of the first A. So Q1 is over here. Q3 better go where the Q0 is over here. And just like before, I can put anything 
in the middle two parts, let's say Q3, because they can be the same. Okay? Does that make some sense? Anyone hopelessly lost? Okay, only a little bit lost. Fine. Okay, well, let's just say I did this for every single uh, 125 choices of uh, states, uh, of three states. Um, now what do I have to do? What do I have to do now? Throw a party? Ah, uh, yeah. I gotta do this modeling of what I push with what I pop. So what I could do here is, let's say I look at this transition where I push an A right here. What transition should I look at in coordination with that? If any transition that pops an A, right? Because those could conceivably be matched up together. Well, I have a few choices for that. So let's say I look at this self loop right here, the one I said, and this one where I pop it in. So here I'm going to look at Q0 is going to do this uh, push an A on, and then Q2 is going to self loop, but read a B, pop an A, push an A. I'm just going to look at those in tandem to, uh, to each other. Well, let's see. How am I going to make the, the rule for this, for those two transitions? Well, let's see. Where did I start on the push transition? Where did I start on the push transition? A Q0. So I, I, what I usually do for this is I write down what PQRS is. So P is definitely Q0. What is Q, the state that we end up in on the pop transition to? Q2. So I'm going to write that down. Where did we end up on the push transition? Uh, Q0. Uh, Q0, that's where we ended up on the push transition. And uh, S is where we started from on the pop transition, which is Q2. Okay. Well, let's see. Well, I got to go, uh, the variable on the left side is A sub P, Q, this Q0, Q2. And the variable in the middle is A, R, S. Well, R, S is Q0, Q2 as well. Q0, Q2. Do I read on the push, on the push transition? It, on the push transition. Yeah, I read an A. So, for that reason, I'd better put an A on the front. On the pop transition, do I read? Yeah, so for, again, the same reason, I put the character I read at the end. Okay? So, all I'm doing is I'm looking at some transition that pushes whatever symbol A, and then I look at some other, every other transition that pops the same character. So we looked at one in particular. Let's look at another one, this Q2 to Q4 guy. So let's say I do Q2 to Q4. Well, here, P is going to be the same because I, uh, everything with the push is going to be the same. So P and R are both going to be the same. Where did I start from on the pop transition over there? We're, uh, I'm going to make a rule corresponding to this push and this pop. What's that? From two to four, you push it. Oh, uh, my mistake. Four to three is what I meant. Then thank you for correcting. So four to three, that's what yeah. Okay. Well, where did I uh, start on the pop transition? Where did I start? 
There are only two choices. Yeah, B4. So, well, S is where we started from because that's how we defined it over there. So, started from is Q4. And the place we ended up at is Q, which is Q3. So, we have all the pieces that we need. So, A sub PQ, well, that's Q0, Q3. And then the variable on the right is going to be ARS. Well, that's 0 and 4. Do I read on the push transition? Don't answer all at once. Do I push on the first transition? Yes. Do I read on the pop transition? possible pair of push and pop transitions. Uh, I would have to do it for, yeah, for the this one and this one. And it'll end up being exactly the same, except this four will be a three. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it would have to be three. Yep. Any other questions? So I just continue doing that, and therefore I would have made a grammar for this. Cool. But really, any other questions? Okay. So let's go back a little bit, and then I don't. I definitely won't be able to convert this to a PDA, but I'll let you uh, try it out. And we'll I want to make a PDA for this language. Uh, A to the I, B to the J, C to the K. And either I equals J or J equals K. Or both, possibly. And uh, just a little note. Um, if I change that word or to an and, so I would have the same number of A's, B's, and C's, it turns out to not be context free. So just a little bit of an interesting note there. But I want to make a PDA for which I have the same number of A's and B's, or I have the same number of B's and C's. Okay. How am I going to do that? Epsilon transitions. Yeah, so epsilon transitions for what? What does that correspond to? Is there a word in there that makes that jumps out? Yeah, or, right? It looks like union. Okay, well, last time in recitations, we covered how to do unions. So we do eps the triple epsilon transitions to both sides. So this top part, this top branch, I guess, is going to check the condition i equals j. The bottom one's going to check the condition j equals k. So, if I want to check i equals j, so I check a's and b's, do I care how many c's appear after? No. So do I have a way of checking a to the n, b to the n? Yeah, how do I do that? Push, push, push down the a's and then push the a's and then pop with the b's after. So, but what was the thing that we had to do at the very beginning? Push down the push uh, dollar sign or pound sign or whatever, yes. So on both of these, I'm going to do the same thing, push a dollar sign on both. So here, what we did is we, as long as we read an A, we're going to put it on the stack. So every time we see an A, put it on. Then we're going to non-deterministically go over, and then we're going to, every time we see a B, pop and A correspondingly. And then, once we do that, we if I can come out of here, then we have the same number of A's and B's. So therefore, I can just pop the dollar sign off and accept. But what should I do in addition to that? 
uh, em empty the well, empty the stack as well. Actually, I don't have to empty the stack because all I'm doing is making a PDA. When I want to convert this to a CFG, then I have to worry about that. But I'm not worried about that here. So here, I'm going to have some C's left over. So what do I do with those? Well, they're not on the stack. Yeah, they're just input. Just read through them. Do I need to worry about the stack? No. So I'm just going to self-loop here, uh, not worry about the stack. Just read the C file. OK. What am I going to do with the A part? Uh, sorry, the J equals K part. Do I worry about how many A's are at the beginning? No. So what I could, what I could do is just blow through the A's without pushing anything on, because I don't care. Then what do I do? Non-deterministically go over. OK? So non-deterministically choose to go over here. Then I should do a similar strategy as to what we did over here. So I should just, every time I see a B, I'm going to put it on. Again, non-deterministically go. And here, I'm going to pop a C off every time I see a B on the stack. So every time I see a C, pop a B off and push nothing. And then what should I do after that? And then obviously I need to accept. Does that second accept state do anything? No. Nope. There, yeah, there's no input left to read, right? Once I blow through the C's, then we're good. Whereas here, I have the check, the condition I had to check was at the beginning of the string, and then those C's are after because I didn't care. Okay. So now we made a PDA for this again. Okay. So, uh, any questions on how we made that PDA? It's just combining the ideas that we've seen. Well, is this PDA ready for the limelight of being converted to a CFG? No. no. Uh, first off, what things are wrong with it? The final triple state. Well, triple epsilons, we don't want those. What's another problem? Final states. Yeah, uh, the final states, uh, there are two of them, that's a problem. Another problem. Uh, I've already handled that. Uh, what about this transition? Can I have a transition in the final state in our construction that reads something? No, I, I can't have that. So we're definitely in deep trouble. That's why we have to fix it up before we convert it. But uh, I'll let you work on that at home. Any other questions? Thank you.